Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. I'm Mr. 23 and today I'm going to teach you how to create this Moon Hunter design. First of all, I want to say that when I created this design, uh, I didn't want to make a tutorial. I just made it because I really enjoy making it. And then after I post it on my Instagram account, I had around seven, eight hundred requests in creating a tutorial from this design, which was insane. I never expected that many people to ask me for a tutorial that badly. So this is it. Let's begin. So the design starts with uh, this background and I move it around and select it only that part of the background. Then I have added a selective color and I have changed the colors to be on the green side more. Then I have added a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and I have darkened the bottom part. Then I have added this picture with a forest and I kept only the left side of the picture, added a mask and I have used only the top part and the bottom part is from this uh, picture. Then on top of everything I have added a photo filter and the color that I have used is this uh, bluish greenish color. Then I have uh, added a brightness and contrast and I have decreased the lights a lot, the brightness to minus 150 and in the middle I have painted with uh, the black color to have a bit of light uh, in this area. Then I have added a photo filter and I wanted to have more bluish uh, into the, the forest. Let me quickly show you how to do this. Add a photo filter from the adjustment layers. Choose your color. I'm going to choose this blue color. Then I'm taking the brush tool and with the black color I'm going to paint on the bottom part. So I'm, I'm going to keep uh, this part of the picture as the way it was. And uh, I have painted a bit to the sides to keep the leaves more green. Then I have painted uh, with another blue color to uh, create something like a mist. So you create a new layer, take the brush tool and with that uh, bluish color you start to paint around. Okay, something like that. Then take the eraser tool, increase the size of the brush. Be sure the flow is around 10% and then you are going to uh, erase some parts. Later on I have added some uh, rays of uh, blue color to the side. So I'm wanting to have a light source that uh, will be necessary for our subject. So let me quickly teach you how to create those rays of uh, light. So create a new layer. You can take the polygonal lasso tool and create uh, this type of shape. And then with the paint bucket tool, you can press the letter G, fill this selection with that color and the mode should be screen. Then add a mask and with the black color, you are going to paint on the side. Then I repeated the process uh, by creating another layer on top of this one, but the mode I used overlay and I have painted with uh, this blue color around. On the right side, I, ha I wanted to have another tree. If you have a picture like that with a white background, this technique works if you have a background of a certain color. In our case is white color. You go to select and then color range. And here press on the screen and select this white area. Hit OK. And Photoshop will select everything but the white color. Then press on the mask by holding Alt. So hold Alt and click on the mask. And now we have selected everything except that white color. If you want to see better, I'm going to create another layer underneath this one. And I'm going to fill it with the black color. As you can see, Photoshop did a really, really nice job in selecting everything. If you want uh, to get rid of these white fringes, there is a very quickly way. We have this white stroke around. You can go to filter and here on the other select minimum and you can use one pixel for example and um, that white uh, fringe, that white stroke is gone. Then I have added a brightness and contrast and decreased the brightness to minimum. Then I have used again the photo filter this time with this uh, green color and made everything uh, greener and at the end I have added to this uh, exposure adjustment layer and made everything even darker. Then I have added some shadows and made everything even darker. Usually I use this uh, method with the soft light. So for that you can go to layer, new layer and here select the mode 
so flight and don't forget to fill it with 50% gray then take the brush tool with the black color the flow should be around 10% and you can start to paint around where you want uh, to have those uh, darker parts so uh, this is how I uh, use this uh, soft light with 50% gray layer then those uh, two layers this one with the overlay and this uh, color that you see here uh, those I have added a bit later when I have added the, the moons and this is uh, the reflection and the highlights for those uh, moons that we are going to come back to those two layers a bit later I have grouped everything into one folder one group and on this group I have uh, added more uh, darkness this time I have used a brightness and contrast so I have uh, this picture so uh, I have uh, selected her and uh, I have added a mask and dragged it into my document and she looks at this moment she looks like that because we have some grass here on the bottom I have added a mask and mask her uh, feet into the grass so if you don't know how to do that it's quite easy you add a mask and then take the brush tool and select uh, any grass brush that you have I have uh, given you some brushes in my uh, previous tutorials you can use those ones so with that uh, brush that uh, grass brush with the flow set to 100% you can uh, paint with a black color something like that on the grass her feet looks much better now like they are blended into the grass then I have added a shadow and set the blending mode to multiply in this case I didn't uh, do that much I just uh, created a new layer and set it to multiply and took the soft round brush and uh, by holding alt I uh, selected a color from the grass this green color because the shadows are never quite black 100% black usually they have a bit of color regarding the lights around the background so with that color I have painted something like that on the ground of course is this is too intense and then I have decreased a bit the opacity something like that and of course if you think it's too much you can take the eraser tool and erase some uh, some parts but because she is uh, in the forest I didn't really thought that she needs strong shadow I wanted to change some colors on her clothes first thing that I did was changing the color of uh, her hood with this uh, this gray bluish color and if you don't know how to do that let me quickly show you take the pen tool and start to select the hood part then press ctrl and enter and with this selection click on the adjustment layers and choose hue and saturation then if you press colorize for example and uh, increase the saturation and if you play around with the colors uh, this is the way you can use to change a color of some parts of the clothes I have did the same thing and I have changed the colors of uh, the gloves and the colors of the top part then I have painted uh, some hair I have a tutorial where I explain how to paint uh, the hair you can check it out and then because she had the this hair part that I didn't really like here on the the bottom it was too straight or the lines were too straight I first uh, drew some hair and then I gave up because I didn't really like like it, the hair to be that long so I have manually drew uh, this uh, thing to be a part of uh, her cloak for example I have uh, placed everything into one group and then on this group I have added uh, brightness and contrast and decrease the brightness and increase the contrast then I have added a selective color and then another selective color where uh, I made her skin uh, more natural another brightness and contrast but this time I increase the brightness and the contrast and the thing that I always do and nobody noticed because it's too small is changing uh the eyes color so now if you look closer you'll see that uh, I made her eyes uh, green but in uh, Instagram for example at this uh, zoom this is not a visible change but I really love to do it because uh, for me it makes more sense like that then with that uh, soft light with 50% gray I have added more shadows so I have painted with a black color and make everything darker then the highlights part because uh, as I said we created this uh, part with the blue rays of light I have added some blue reflections or highlights on our right side her left side so if you want to quickly learn how to do that go to layer new layer and this time we are going to choose linear dot and fill it with a black this time we are going to take the brush tool and 
we are going to use this uh, blue color and set the flow to around 10%. Then paint on the sides, something like that. And when you finish, just double click on the image and then we are going to use the blend diff and uh, if we are going to hold alt and drag the middle to the right you'll see that the color will disperse and now it looks more natural uh, than that uh, full uh, blue color all right so this is the blue reflection the first one and then later on i have added this uh, orange reflection by using the same method but now because we don't have that light source those moons that i'm going to add later on it doesn't make sense why we should have uh, this color on her skin so I'm going to keep it for the moment because anyway we will add it later but uh, since we are here I'm going to keep it. And then at the end I have added uh, the white highlights that I always uh, add at the end. So uh, this is uh, our character that looks much much better right now. So if you don't know how to do those white highlights it's the same method. You go to layer new layer and the linear dodge should be selected and fill it with black. And this time we are not going to use the blend diff. So uh, take the brush tool and the white color and zoom in, use the same uh, flow, 9-10% and with the white color uh, I'm going to paint on the sides, something like that. Now I'm using a tablet, so I'm painting with the pen tool and I'm going to show you the method uh, in a few seconds without the pen, only with the mouse. So uh, this is uh, how I create the highlights with the pen tool, I'm just drawing on the sides and uh, on the interior for example where you see that uh, the light should intersect with her uh, body for example and here also but not too much because she already had some highlights over there and of course uh, on the sides of the bow for example and uh, on the other part that uh, the light should touch her uh, bow and her clothes and everything else. If you don't have a tablet you can do the same thing with a mouse. You are going to paint the same thing on the sides uh, and then if you want to have that uh, faded uh, effect okay because with the mouse everything is uh, you see too, too sharp for example the edges are too sharp you should switch to the smudge tool and you can drag um, the sides even more and uh, it will disperse that uh, color and it will look much better. Then you can uh, switch to the black color if the white uh, highlights is too are too intense. And um, with the brush tool and the black color, if you paint over, it will uh, make uh, that uh, white the fade and it looks uh, much better. And at the end I have used uh, a normal layer set to color and I have painted uh, this side of her uh, hood with uh, some orange color. So uh, I wanted to have some color here on the hood that comes from the moons. So I created a new layer and set it to color. And with the brush tool and orange color I have painted on the hood. And now let's go and take care of the panther. So this is our panther. I have used the pen tool and uh, added uh, a selection. So I have selected the panther, added a mask and then drag it into my document. And because uh, from the original picture our panther had uh, some parts that I didn't want to keep, I have uh, added uh, a new layer and with the clone stamp tool I have cloned all those parts and uh, now the panther looks much better. So if you don't know how to do that really quickly create a new layer and uh, use the clone stamp tool. Let's zoom in. So I want to get rid of this gray area. The opacity should be 100% and um, then hold alt and we are going to clone this area from here from the panther and then if you paint over it will uh, use that area to cover whatever you want to hide. So for example I'm going to use this area and uh, paint over. So this is how uh, clone stamp tool works. Then I have added this selective color and uh, made the panther a bit bluish. Then with the brightness and contrast I have uh, decreased the brightness, made her uh, darker. And then with the exposure, because uh, we didn't have the lights coming from the left, you see our panther has the lights coming from our left side, but uh, in our design uh, it doesn't have lights there, so I have added this exposure and made those parts uh, darker. And then with the selective color I have modified the blacks. So when I have uh, used the exposure I saw that uh, this black color doesn't match our uh, background because it's too uh, dark. 
I have added a selective color. You should modify the blacks and uh, decrease the blacks. So now that uh, black color matches the rest of the image. And then I have added the highlights a bit on the side here because we have some uh, lights coming from that side. So now this orange uh, highlight doesn't make sense because we don't have the moons yet but we will have them soon. And then the bluish highlight again with that uh, method that I just showed you. And I have uh, used a layer set to color and I have uh, painted with the orange on the sides of the panther and at the end the highlights again painted with the white color on the sides and that uh, soft light to make everything uh, darker. I just want to mention that I cannot really show you step by step whatever I'm doing because that would take me like hours to show you everything but uh, generally the method that I'm using is the same. I always uh, use those highlights on uh, linear dodge uh, the shadows on soft light. If you watch more tutorials that I have done, you'll understand those methods uh, even better. So uh, if you don't really understand everything in today's tutorial, is that uh, I cannot really make a 2-3 hours tutorial. So I need to go a bit faster, but always the idea is the same. Then um, I have uh, manually painted uh, those uh, little uh, parts that I erased uh, when I selected the, the panther, so those uh, tiny airlines. So at the end, the thing that I just uh, talked to you about, oh. I changed the color of the eyes by using this time a hue and saturation, so I made uh, the panther's uh, eyes uh, orange. Then I have placed the panther everything into one group and I have added more uh, bluish uh, highlights using that linear dodge. Then in front of us I have added those uh, leaves and uh, added a Gaussian blur to them and made them really blurry. If you don't know how to use the Gaussian blur go to filter and here choose blur and then Gaussian blur and choose the amount that you want. In our case was uh, something like uh, 30% because I wanted to have a lot of blur because those leaves are really in front of us. Okay, and then I have added uh, brightness and contrast to decrease the brightness, of course, because uh, they should be darker. And uh, then I have added this, this uh, linear dodge and I have manually painted some uh, orange highlights because uh, the moons will reflect those orange uh, lights on everything around them. And then here on the trees I have added an, an owl, this one. So before creating the camera row filter adjustments, let's go back to the beginning and uh, bring back those two layers that I just told you about. So this one, this uh, overlay, normal layer set to overlay and I have painted with the orange color. Let me quickly show you how to do this. So create a new layer, set it to overlay. And now if I'm painting with the orange color, you see it added that uh, orange color on the ground. And if you double click and use the blend if, hold alt and drag this slider to the right, it will blend much better that color into the ground. And then the highlights is that linear dodge and I have uh, painted some parts of the forest with the yellowish uh, orange color to have some reflections on our forest. Now press Ctrl R Shift and I on top of everything. So you should be on top of all the layers, right? Not uh, where we were before. So this is a screenshot from everything that we have so far. Right click and convert it to a smart object. Then go to filter and choose camera row filter. So here in the camera row filter, I have decreased the temperature and decrease a bit the tint. Uh, increase the exposure contrast shadows and decrease the highlights whites and blacks. Then on the texture clarity and the haze I have increased them all and on the detail I have increased uh, all of the sharpening noise reduction and color noise reduction and on the color grading I have moved a bit the sliders so the midtones and the highlights I uh, move them a bit to the right to have some, uh, some warm tones and then the shadows I kept them to the green blue side. After I finish with the camera row filter I have added an oil paint uh, filter so go to filter and here on the stylize choose oil paint. So those are the settings that I have used in the oil paint. As I said in my other tutorials you can use this oil paint or not it's just a matter of preferences. Some people prefer the more sharpened images uh, some prefer the more painted look results. And then at the end I have added some uh, tilt shift blur because I wanted to have uh, the focus on our subjects and the rest should be blurred. So go to filter here on the blur gallery choose tilt shift blur. 
The main setting of the blur is right in the middle of the image so if you move this around you'll see it adds the blur and if you decrease it it will uh, decrease the blur also. So uh, I wanted to have some blur in the bottom part and also in the top part a bit. So I have uh, around 6% uh, blur on the bottom part and that's it. So when I first created this design I used only one moon. So this one here on top and then at the end I changed my mind and I use more moons and I place them all around. So uh, in order to hide the moon between uh, the forest uh, trees. So let's add a mask and then with the brush tool for example and the black color and the opacity should be 100% uh, and also the flow. I'm going to paint something like that where the tree has those branches right and then uh, here for example I switch to white and I'm painting on that area all right and here on the bottom with the black color again if you paint it will hide that area and it looks like our moon is behind the branches and I have done this with the rest of the images because as I said uh, in the beginning I wanted to have just one moon and the rest should be like light sources and then I changed my mind and I have placed the moon inside those uh, big spheres. So for example this one here on the bottom we have the moon, this is the moon and I drag the moon on top of uh, this circle and I hold alt and I have placed the moon inside the circle and I have done the same thing with all the rest and now we have the moon inside uh, all those uh, spheres that we placed before. So for the magic part if you watch my other tutorials I have this method that I used a lot. Uh, you create a folder, a group, and you set the group to screen. And inside the group, the first layer, the bottom layer, you fill a new layer with the black color. Then you create a new empty layer. And the third one is this gradient map. So this gradient map has uh, five colors. First from the left, it's uh, black. First from the right, it's white. And in between the first one, it's orange. The second one, it's uh, the same orange, but a lesser orange. And then the third one, it's the one closest to the white color and then press OK. All right. And now if you paint on this layer, the empty layer with the brush tool and the white color. So if I'm painting now, it will do something like that, which is very, very intense. So you should decrease the flow to around uh, 3, 4 percent, something like that. And then if you paint once, you'll see it will add that uh, glow on the parts that you are painting. So if you press more times, it will add more glow, right? So this is how I added uh, this glow on the moon part. So this is the magic in the panther eyes that I have manually painted. As I said, I have uh, many tutorials where I explain how to create this type of magic. And then on top of everything, because I didn't really want this uh, color on the magic, I have added a hue and saturation and changed the color to this red color. So this is really easy. So when you finish with uh, one color only, as you can see our gradient, it's an orange gradient. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and this time is hue and saturation and press colorize and increase the saturation uh, and change the color to any color that you that you want. So uh, today if you don't want, uh, let's say you don't like that red color that I have used and you want to use uh, this color for example and then press Ctrl and I on the mask. What this does is inverting the mask. And now if I'm painting with uh, the white color and the brush on the area that uh, you want to have only that uh, color, it will bring back uh, that color. What is really nice about this hue and saturation is that you can create another one, for example, another hue and saturation, press again colorize, increase the saturation. And if uh, we want, let's say, a bluish color, this one, right, invert the mask by pressing Ctrl and I. And now if we are painting with the white color again, we can have two colors on this uh, magic thing. And you can have like uh, 10 colors or whatever you want. So now if I'm doing the same thing and I'm using the red color, for example, we can have three colors here, right? So now if I'm painting with white, I can have this red color also. So uh, this is the beauty of the of this method that you can have as many colors as you want. I wanted to have more intense red on her clothes so I have added uh, this hue and saturation and I have made uh, the top part more red and also her boots and made them uh, more uh, red. And then at the end of everything I added this high pass filter so press again Ctrl Alt Shift and I and go to filter and other and then 
choose a high pass and here use 0.3 radius hit ok and we are going to change the blending mode to linear light let's zoom in so uh, so this is without this high pass filter so because i use that oil paint now i want to have a bit of sharpening so i have added this high pass filter and this high pass filter makes everything uh, more sharpened so this is the result after the high pass uh, filter thank you so much for watching this tutorial and if you got so far i got an announcement to make starting next week i am going to promote in my videos a design that i like from instagram so if you want me to see your post and to have a chance to be nominated in my videos please start to use this tag from now on whenever you post your design on instagram mr 23 review I know that Benny first started this thing, but I haven't seen him doing it for some time and I know how desperate I was to have my design nominated in his videos. So if you like this idea, don't forget to use this tag whenever you post your work on Instagram. Thank you so much and see you next week when I'm going to announce the winners of my uh, Do It Better contest. See you next week.